Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Your next witness. Mr. Jenkins. Yeah. Mr. Jenkins, can you hear me, sir? Afternoon. Yes, I can, Your Honor. All right. Perfect. Thank you, sir. All right. If you raise your right hand for me, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth under penalty of law? I do. All right. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Mr. Jenkins. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. And could you please state your full name for the record? Starling Jenkins III. And Mr. Jenkins, where do you live? Los Angeles, California. And what is your occupation? Executive chauffeur security. And how long have you worked as an executive chauffeur and in security? Executive chauffeur for 30 years, security, security for eight years. And, and what occupations did you hold prior to working as an executive chauffeur and, and in security? Route sales executive and United States Marine. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, do you know the plaintiff in this case, Johnny Depp? Yes, I do. And when did you first meet Mr. Depp? 1993. How did you first meet Mr. Depp? He is delivery service transport him to and from. And so in the, in the 30 or so years that you've known Mr. Depp, uh, what services have you por performed for him uh, over the course of that period? Child care, animal care, personal assistant duties, security, and transportation. And, and could you uh, estimate approximately how many hours per week uh, would you provide those services to Mr. Depp? 40 to 60 hours. And can you describe generally your interactions with Mr. Depp in the time that you've worked for him? Pleasant, always upbeat. Do you know the defendant in this case, Amber Heard? Yes. And when did you first meet Ms. Heard? After the filming of the Rum Diary project. And can you describe generally your interactions with Ms. Heard? Pleasant, cordial, very respectful. And so in your time working with Mr. Depp, did you uh, ever observe Mr. Depp's and Ms. Hurd's interactions with one another? Yes. And can you describe those interactions generally, please? Very cordial, very uh, aware that people are around them, very, very friendly. Did you ever see them argue? Yes. Can you describe uh, what you observed about those arguments? It would be initiated by her. She would try to engage with him. He would tell me to turn the music up. And so um, where did these arguments take place? In the car. Do you recall how many times you witnessed them argue? Twice. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, turning your attention to April 21st, 2016, uh, can you tell the jury what you recall about that day? Could you repeat the question, sir? Sure. And so turning your attention to April 21st, 2016, can you tell the jury what you recall about that day? It was the birthday party being held at the penthouse. And when you say the penthouse, what are you referring to? It's the Eastern Columbia building. And what were you doing that evening? That evening, I was assigned security on the detail. Were you inside the residence uh, while the birthday party was taking place? I was in the CP, the command post, that station on the same floor, right outside of the elevator. And, and did you interact with Ms. Hurd at all that evening? Yes, I did. Can in you regards to getting her clients uh, keys, parking, making sure no one else was on the floor that wasn't invited to the party. Were there any issues at the birthday party uh, at the time uh, that you were present at the penthouses? No issues except for the boss did not show up. And do you recall what time you left that day? 11.15 p.m. that evening. And Mr. Jenkins, what happened the next day, April 22nd, 2016? 
I arrived early, 10.45, went upstairs to the penthouse. I was informed by Amber that she got in a fight with Johnny last night. She threw his personal property over the balcony into the streets, 9th and Broadway. And when you say personal property, what are you referring to? His phone, wallet, credit cards, passports, everything that's in his wallet. Did uh, Ms. Hurd say anything else to you about this uh, altercation? Nothing except she, they were fighting. So what, what did you do after Ms. Hurd informed you that she had thrown Mr. Depp's personal property off the balcony? Formulated a plan with Norm from the office to use the Find My Phone app, hit the streets, and try to get lucky. Did you end up finding Mr. Depp's phone? Yes, I did. In Skid Row, probably six miles from the house. And who had the who had the phone? A homeless gentleman, unhoused gentleman. I approached him about the phone. He was honest. He returned it. I gave him a reward for it. And what was the reward? $420 chicken tacos, chips, apples, Fiji water. So after finding Mr. Depp's phone, what did you do? I returned to the penthouse, showed the phone to Amber that I retrieved it. I left it in the, C in the CP for the evening security to return it to Mr. Depp. And so after figuring out uh, things with the phone, what, what happened next? What happened next is I walked Amber to the car. We got everybody in the car. She's on her way to Coachella. I went back to the penthouse to retrieve the dogs and the luggage. Were you also going to Coachella with Miss Heard? Yes, I was. I was the transportation for Amber and her friends while she was at Coachella. So how did you get to Coachella? I drove the SUV provided by Johnny put the animals and all the luggage in and headed out to the venue. And the, the, the morning of April 22nd, did you see uh, any injuries on Miss Heard? No marks, no injuries. Um, and so uh, driving out to Coachella, did anyone drive with you? I was in the car alone except for the animals. And how did Miss Heard get to Coachella? She drove her Mustang. Was anyone else in her car? She was with, I believe, her sister and one other friend, her assistant, Savannah. And do you know how many days uh, Ms. Hurd and her friends were planning to stay at Coachella? So the following Monday, I believe it's the 25th of April, we departed. And do you recall where Ms. Hurd was staying at Coachella? We were staying at the Parker. Boutique hotels there in Palm Springs outside of Coachella. Were you also staying at the Parker Hotel? I also stayed there. And so did you attend Coachella for work or for pleasure? For work. And what was your job that weekend? Provide security and transportation, animal care. Amber's rolling assistant, take care of her, whatever she needed while she was there at the Parker or in the uh, out travel. Do you recall what time approximately you arrived at the Parker Hotel on April 22nd? Around 5.30ish, maybe quarter to six. And, and what did Ms. Hurd and her friends do that evening, April 22nd? That evening, we arrived, we were assigned the rooms, we went with the, with the uh, staff of the Parker Hotel around to the suites where we were staying. They let us in, we let all the luggage in, and uh, we proceeded to uh, plan for that evening to depart by 7, 7.15 is to get to the festival then. And, and how did Ms. Hurd and her friends get from the hotel to the festival that evening? I drove them directly to there. And did you have any discussions with Ms. Hurd on the way to Coachella that evening? We had a conversation pertaining to the surprise she left in the boss's bed prior to leaving the apartment.
And when you refer to the surprise in the boss's bed, what are you referring to? The defecation. And what did Ms. Hurd say about the defecation in Mr. Dove's bed? A horrible practical jerk gone wrong. Mr. Jenkins, what observations did you make about Ms. Hurd at Coachella in April 2016? She had no worries. She was there to whoop it up. It's her birthday. She's with her friends. And how often were you with her that weekend? Was with her every day. She went to the venue from the time that we interacted with the wallet incident, the night before at the party, all the way until Monday, we returned with the pets and the luggage. And did you uh, observe anything about Ms. Hurd's health that weekend? She got sick. Do you know she what- got sick at the venue at the night. Do you know what caused Ms. Hurd to be sick? She was eating the magic mushrooms and drinking red wine on an empty stomach. And uh, how do you know that she drank red wine and took magic mushrooms? I saw the room service and I went to their room to collect them, to take them out that evening. So is that something, in the car. excuse me, is that something you witnessed? I witnessed it. And what did you do uh, in response to Ms. Hurd being sick at Coachella? I collected her, got her in the vehicle. She didn't want anyone else to know that she was sick. Take her back to the parker alone. I took her to the 7-Eleven where I retrieved hydrating fluids, Advil, and let her have those. Got her back to the parker, got her into the suite, and then went back to pick up everyone else. And, and Mr. Jenkins, when you said uh, Ms. Hurd got sick, do you recall what her symptoms were? Yeah, she was throwing up. Mr. Jenkins, did you see any injuries of any kind on Ms. Hurd April 22nd, 2016? No injuries. I'll sustain him, so yes. What about the rest of that weekend, Mr. Jenkins? Any injuries that you saw? No injuries. Um, have you ever witnessed any physical abuse between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? No. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins, nothing further. All right, cross-examination. Good afternoon, Mr. Jenkins. Good afternoon. So just, just to be clear on the chronology, um, you met Mr. Depp in 1993, is that right? Correct. And you've worked for him ever since? Off and on, yes. Okay. And your your salary is paid by Mr. Depp, correct? Salary, no. You receive pay for the work that you do for Mr. Yes. Depp, correct? Of course, yes, of course. And what Mr. Depp's security is your highest priority in your job, correct? Yes, it is. You're loyal to Mr. Depp. And his family. And his family. You're loyal to Mr. Depp, right? Yes. Now, I want to turn to the, the, the night of April 21st, 2016. You, just, just to recap, you said you were working a security shift at Amber's birthday at the Eastern Columbia building that evening, correct? Correct. And you said that your shift ended around 11.15, correct? Correct. And you, you said the boss still hadn't shown up by the time that you left the Eastern Columbia building, right? Correct. So you have no idea where Mr. Depp was or what he was doing from 9.30 p.m. that evening until at least 11.15 when you left the Eastern Columbia building, right? No, I do know what he was doing. He was attending to his mother. Okay. You weren't with him. I had information. Okay. All right. That's information that you, that you received, but you, you have no personal knowledge of that. I have no readings. I have no reason to doubt it. It came from Sean. Okay. I have no oh, that is, oh, okay. So Mr. Mr. Bet told you that? The boss is out there. Right. Mr. Bet told you that he was tending to his mother that night? He didn't say mother. He said the boss was out there. I'm aware of what the situation was, the time frame. He's with his mother. Okay. All right. Interesting. Okay. Um, 
And did you have any understanding that he had a meeting with his new business manager earlier that evening where he was told that he was running out of money and that his taxes hadn't been paid in years? Did you have any understanding of that? Objection. Or anyone else? Objection. Foundation calls for speculation. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. And you didn't see Mr. Depp that night, right? No, I did not. Okay. So you came back the next morning to escort Amber to Coachella, right? Yes. And you say that Amber told you that she had thrown Mr. Depp's phone off the roof? Correct. And did you come to understand that um, Mr. Depp had thrown her phone off the roof that evening prior to when Amber threw Mr. Depp's phone off the roof? She informed me of that. Okay, she informed you of that. So when you went outside to look for Mr. Depp's phone, you, you weren't looking for Ms. Hurd's phone, were you? She had her phone. She had her phone. She was trying to re-download and back it up. Okay. So she, you were only looking for Mr. Depp's phone when you went when you went downstairs to the to the to uh, to try to. You found it with a with an unhoused person. You said correct. Correct. Okay. And you did you did I hear you right that you said it was six miles away where you found the phone? Correct. It, it actually wasn't six miles away. It was it was actually right below the building. The ECB building, no, it was correct? Not. Okay, let's. No, it was not. Can you pull up? Um, does he have a way to see documents that just just him, Your Honor? Yes. Okay. Um, could you please pull up uh, the witness statement, Mr. Jenkins? Mr. Jenkins, do you do you remember giving testimony on Mr. Depp's behalf in the UK trial? Yes, I did. And um, you gave you gave a witness statement first in in writing, correct? Do you remember that? Yes. And then you were examined um, by the attorneys in the trial, correct? Correct. Okay. Can you see on your screen the statement uh, that's, do, do you see a witness statement? Yes, I see it. It says witness statement of Starling Jenkins, right? Correct. And this is the statement that you wrote and signed as part of the, uh, the UK trial on behalf of Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. Okay. If you can scroll, please, to page three of the document. And Mr. Jenkins, I'm going to read you what you wrote in paragraph 13. Um, okay. And we can go from there. Um, on paragraph okay. 13, you wrote in your witness statement in the UK trial, the Find My iPhone application indicated that Johnny's phone was somewhere on the streets below the balcony of the residence. Did I read that right? Uh, if that's what it says, that's what it says. I'm telling you the phone was in Skid Row. Okay, so. I have so a photo of the gentleman that found it. I have the location where the phone was found. Isn't Skid Row just a few blocks away from the, the Eastern Columbia building? No, it's uh, it's on Sixth and Main, I guess, depending on what area you are. Okay, so so one of these two sworn statements, either what you just said in court just now that it was found six miles away, or this, one of these is false. Correct? Uh, it's it's just inadequate as far as the location. The location is not below. The, the penthouse. It's not on Broadway. It okay. was found on Broadway by the unhoused man, and then he lives off of Skid Row. Okay. Now let's move on to Coachella, please. You yes. you were with uh, Amber and her friends that weekend at Coachella, um, and, and yes. you testified a little bit about what you saw. Is it fair to say that Amber and her friends were having a good time that weekend? Yes, it was. And there were thousands of other people at that music festival too, correct? Correct. Okay. To your, to you, were you aware that Amber's sister Whitney was pregnant and sober that weekend? Wasn't my information. Wasn't my knowledge. Were you aware that Amber's sister Whitney threw up in a parking lot that weekend? No. Okay. To your knowledge and understanding, Mr. Jenkins, um, there's nothing wrong with wanting to spend time with your friends at a music festival after being abused by your husband, right? What abuse? That's not an abnormal thing to want to be around your friends, correct? 
She was partying it up with her friends. She okay. was partying it up. And you said you didn't hear anything about, she didn't say anything to you about domestic violence having taken place, correct? Nothing in the car pertaining to that. Would it surprise you that she might not want to talk to someone who had worked for her husband for around 23 years at that point about domestic violence? Would that surprise you? Objection, speculation, Your Honor. Sustain the objection. Next question. Ms. Heard texted you on May 12th, uh, 2016, asking you to call her, correct? Correct. And you did not bother to respond to that text, correct? Correct. And that was the last communication that you had with her, correct? Correct. Now, you weren't, um, just to be clear, you weren't at Amber's house on Orange Avenue in March 2013 when Johnny was there, correct? I might have driven him to the location. I'm familiar with the address. But you didn't enter the house at any point in March 2013, correct? Depending on if he had luggage or gifts going upstairs, I might have. You, but you didn't hang out with him inside the house, right? Hurry up and wait in the car, sir. Okay. And you weren't at the Hicksville Trailer Palace in late May or early June 2013, right? No. You weren't on a plane flight from Boston to Los Angeles in May 2014, correct? With, with Johnny and Amber. You weren't, in the, you weren't with Mr. Depp and Amber in the Bahamas in August 2014, correct? Correct. You weren't with Mr. Depp and Amber in Tokyo in January 2015, correct? Uh, no, I was not there, correct. You weren't with Mr. Depp and Amber in Australia in March 2015, correct? Correct. You weren't at Thanksgiving with them in Penthouse 5 of the Eastern Columbia Building in November 2015, correct? Uh, I believe I was there. You didn't. I might you have been assigned to detail. I don't have the schedule, but I might have been assigned to detail that day. Thanksgiving, it's a holiday. Sure, sure. You don't have any specific recollection of that one way or the other, though, correct? I would probably say I was on duty that day. Okay. It's the holiday. Okay. Um, you weren't celebrating Thanksgiving in Penthouse 5 with them that evening, correct? I was in the CP. Okay. And that's that's a separate room, correct? Separate room on the same level, correct. And you weren't in the Bahamas in late December 2015, correct? With them? Correct. You weren't in the ECB with just the two of them the night of December 15th, 2015, correct? That is uh, right before the Christmas party, I believe. Correct. And finally, you weren't in the penthouse of the Eastern Columbia building on the night of May 21st, 2016 with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd, correct? Correct. And, and, and you'd agree that you have no personal knowledge of what went on between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd behind closed doors, correct? Correct. Nothing further. Thank you. All right. Redirect. Just very quickly, Your Honor, do we have um, Mr. Jenkins' witness statement or perhaps? And if we could go to the third page, please. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, directing your attention to paragraph 13, which Mr. Rottenborn had you look at just uh, a second ago. Um, yes. He read the first sentence of that uh, witness statement. Um, the find my phone, the find my iPhone application indicated that Johnny's phone was somewhere on the streets below the balcony of the residence. Walked out. Could you could you please read for the jury the the second part of the that paragraph? I walked out onto the street, did not see the phone. I then asked several homeless people if they had the phone. One homeless man admitted to me that he had the phone, returned the phone to me in exchange for the following. 425 in cash, three chicken tacos, two bags of chips, four apples, two apples, four bottles of water. And so do you, do you recall where you found the iPhone that day? Yes, I do. Objection, asked and answered. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Mr. Jenkins, moving to uh, Coachella, um, Mr. Rottenborn asked you about um, 
Whitney Heard. Do you know who that is? Yes, I do. Do you know the difference between Whitney Heard and Amber Heard? Yes, I do. And who was sick that one day? One is the boss's wife. One is the boss's sister-in-law. Who was sick that day at Coachella? Amber was sick. Thank you. Nothing further. All right. Is this witness subject to recall? No, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Jenkins, you're, um, you're free from testimony, and therefore you're free to, to do whatever you need to do, or you can watch the proceedings. It's up to you. But uh, you're, you're done for today, though. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you to the court. All right. Have a good day. You also.